Okay, let's try. But that door was less compliant than the first one. The bolts creaked, but the wheel didn't budge a centimeter. Seems jammed. Let me! Yolanda rushed to the door with a crowbar she got from who knows where, and applied herself to it with all of her unimpressive weight. That gave us a chance. I helped her and soon the door fell on the floor with a bang. The hinges turned out to be completely rusted. Seems that not everything was made to last back then. Behind the door there was a tunnel almost the same as the one we had come here through. Don't do anything stupid. I took Yulana by the hand and stepped out of the room. It was another endless tunnel. The ceiling seemed to become lower, even though I logically realized that it did not change. Yulana didn't seem to be bothered at all though. She was humming as she walked. It annoyed me more and more. Looks like you're having fun. Of course I am, aren't you? No, I don't see any reason to have fun. We should find Shurik quickly and get out of here. He may not be here at all. Then why the hell? Look! Yolanda snatched a flashlight from my hand. There was a huge hole in the ground a couple of meters in front of us. He may be down there. She walked to the edge and leaned. Some rails? Looks like there was a mine under the tunnel. The depth of the hole was low enough to let us climb out of it, so I knew that Yolanda would say next. Come on! I wanted to object, but she had jumped down, leaving me in complete darkness. Hey! I had to follow her. I didn't know what they dug for here, but the mine had been abandoned for a long time. The planks had become damp, the rails were rusted, earth broke through the walls in some places. The whole tunnel leading into the unknown was suspicious. It looked like it was about to collapse and bury us. Come on! Yolanda desperately pulled on my arm. Where to? Why? What would Shirk be doing here? What if... She made a serious face. What if he is just sitting here somewhere, injured and waiting for help, and we just turn around and go, leaving him to die? I estimated the height of the ceiling one more time and walked slowly after the restless Yolanda. Soon we reached a fork. Let's go to the right. Wait. I grabbed her arm. What's the matter? What if it's a dead end? Or worse than a dead end, a whole labyrinth? Well... She thought. Then, let's mark the starting point. Yolanda picked up a large stone from the ground and scratched a cross on one of the beams that supported the ceiling. Do you think that will help? It will. Probably. I'll have to choose where to go. I just can't leave it to a little girl. I mean, Yolanda thinks to the right. Let's go to the right. It seems that there is another fork in the road. Uh, left, I guess. It seems that there is another fork in the road. Right again. Well, fuck it. Keep going right. Uh, we'll find something eventually. Fuck it. Let's just go left four times. See where we end up. Well, that wasn't very productive. God damn it. Oh well, try right, right, left, I guess. I don't know. God damn it. This sucks. Uh, this is the worst. Well, we ended up somewhere. At last, we left the tunnel and found ourselves in a hall with a high ceiling. Though it could hardly be called a hall, they must have used it to mine or something. Coal, probably, or maybe gold. The walls have been cut by picks, axes, or pneumatic drills. This place was pitch black, so our only salvation was the flashlight. If it breaks, it's unlikely we will ever get out of here. By its light, I noticed a red piece of cloth in the corner. It was a pioneer, pioneer neckerchief. Shurik was obviously here somewhere. Shurik! 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 
Only our echoes answer us. I hope he's okay. Don't worry, we'll find him. Well, where could he have gone? There was no other exit from this room. It's possible that there are places in these tunnels that we haven't visited. Seems like we still have to keep looking for him. Damn it! Ah, fuck. Right, left. Right, right, maybe. Nope. Right again. Left again. This is the worst. And we're back at the start. Um, left. Left. We came to some kind of miner's camp. Pigs and helmets everywhere, a rusty wagon stood on the corner. All the items were so old they dated from the beginning of the 20th century rather than the middle. So this really is a mine, which means we could wander around here for ages without finding a way out. But I sensed that exit was somewhere nearby, and so we went further. Seems that there is another fork in the road. SON OF A BITCH! Ah, this is the worst puzzle ever. I don't know what combinations I've already done at this point. Oh well, if I click the button enough times, we'll find it eventually. And we ended up there. So left, left leads us there. So left, right, maybe. Left, right. 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 Left. I am not enjoying this. There is literally no kind of hint of what directions to go in. Maybe if I click right enough times, something will happen. God damn it, how'd I end up there? Son of a bitch! Okay, we're back at the start. Um, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. I seriously have no idea where to go. Because this part's a piece of poop. God damn it! No. Uh, I do not enjoy this in any way. I am very sorry. So, I guess, what do you guys think of the game so far? You Do you like this visual novel? Any complaints over it? Other than the fact that I'm clearly reading off of a sheet of paper for what options to pick. God damn it. No, I don't think there's any sort of guide for this. Uh... I really don't like this part. It's kind of just really shitty. Get okay, is there? Fuck. Where's this option? Skip maybe. Damn it! I can't skip it. Uh. I want to skip. Can I not skip it at all? What if I just do that? Damn it, I just can't skip it. Oh well. 
What are these options again? Okay, that brings up my save. Fuck it. Going right. And we were here. That brings up my menu. And what's this? That's also save. Ah, uh, fucking hell. I'm probably gonna end up cutting this out, honestly. We've been lost for a long time now. Oh my god, we're finally here. Like, fuck. At last, the ray of the flashlight revealed an old wooden door in the darkness. Here we are. Where? Somewhere. I don't know. But she was right about something. At least we've gotten out of the labyrinth. After all these turns and forks, I wasn't sure that we'd ever make it back, but... On the other hand, why wouldn't this mine have any exits? Yolanda opened the door and stared into the darkness. So you won't go first as usual? Well... Okay. I stepped over the threshold. A small room was beyond the door. Maybe a storage room or a bomb shelter. There were bottles and cigarette stubs, which means that somebody had been here before us. It wasn't an encouraging fact by itself. But now I was certain that there was another exit from this mine. They couldn't have come all this way as we did. The ray of light moved around the room, examining every corner. Suddenly it lit up a human figure. It was Shirk, holding up against one of the walls. Hey, there you are. We've been looking for you all night. And you... It seemed that he hadn't even noticed us, just sitting and mumbling to himself. Shirk! Here, here's there! What do you mean, who? Your rescue team. Get up and let's go. I won't go anywhere with you, he mumbled. You'll lead me around these tunnels again. I know. I won't go anywhere. I'll stay right here. You won't get me. Stop with your nonsense. Looks like he's gone insane. No, no. You won't trick me this time. Stop it already. I took a few steps towards Shirk, but he jumped up at once and waved a metal rod. Don't come near me. Leave me alone. Calm down, it's me, Simeon. Don't you recognize me? Simeon? No, you're not Simeon. I noticed the Yuana who was standing next to me had disappeared somewhere. You're not Simeon, and I'm not going to. In the trembling light, Shirk's hand appeared for a moment. Wielding the metal rod, I covered my head instinctively. Nothing. When I opened my eyes, he had already disappeared. Yuana stood next to me and giggled, holding the metal rod. Just like a scout. Yeah, a scout. From somewhere far off, the devilish laughter of Shurik was heard. He ran away. Screw him. I don't care if he dies here. I spat on the floor and leaned against the wall. If it hadn't been for Yulana, I wasn't prepared for that. Shurik might not have killed me, but he could have seriously injured me. To be left lying here injured would be equivalent to death. We don't even know when help will arrive. And would they be able to find me in this labyrinth? What the hell did I agree to come here? Indulging that little girl. You look like you're going to kill somebody. If a good candidate presents itself. Yulana shuddered. No, not you. It might be nice to spank you. There's no reason to kill you. Hmm. I see Simeon's into spanking. She smirked. Yet. Yeah. Oh, you. Okay, it is definitely time to get out of here. They can send their special force teams. Bleh. They can send their special forces, rescue teams, Ghostbusters, whatever tomorrow. I don't care. Will we go back? I looked around the room once again and noticed a door to my left. Wow. 
The door was just like in the bomb shelter, a massive metal one. I pulled the wheel a couple of times, but it creaked doobly. If only I had that girl bar. It doesn't work? Yolanda asked in a depressed voice. No. Actually, I didn't have any strength left. In another situation, I would scream myself, ask Yolanda to help, look for something to use as a lever, but now I just wanted to get out of the mine. I wanted to hope that there was a path of least resistance for us to take. And that meant hoping that I remember the way through the labyrinth. Let's go back. Okay. She smiled and took my hand. We walked even slower on the way back through the labyrinth. Stones scattered under our feet, water dripped from the ceiling onto our heads, feeling like drops of molten tin. Yolanda quieted down and followed me in silence. Did something happen? What do you mean? It's strange for you to be quiet for more than a minute. No, everything is alright. But something was wrong for sure. One fork after another. A minute ago I was certain that at the next corner I would see the cross Yolanda had scratched before. I was wrong. My faith in my ability to guide us was melting away with each second. Well, whatever. I decided to distract myself with conversation. It's alright, it's just... What? It all went so wrong. With Shurik and now we're stuck here. You saved my life. You should be proud of yourself. I tried to encourage her, but Yolanda didn't seem to get it. But if I hadn't taken his metal rod away, he might have stayed. Whether he stayed or not, what's the difference now? We'd still have to get out from here, wouldn't we? Yes, but... Everything's alright. That psycho will find a way for sure. I really was sure about that. Finally, we came to the tunnel, on the wall of which was the cross. Yolanda cheered up a bit, and we almost ran to the rest of the way to the surface. You see? The full moon shined above us again, and the building of the old camp didn't look nearly so ominous as before, especially in comparison to the bomb shelter and the catacombs. That was cool, wasn't it? It looks like Yolanda's gotten her usual cheerfulness back. I'm not too sure about cool, but I'm glad we got out. So, shall we go look for Shuri? What? I was speechless for a moment, unable to even finish the sentence. Are you crazy? We already found him. Tomorrow, Olga and the police can go down there and catch that caveman to run tests on him. Well... No wells. Back to the camp to sleep. I walked rapidly from the dreadful place, ignoring the furious Yulana. Wait, what? Her name is spelled with an I there. Oliana. Within ten minutes, we were already back at the square. Okay, that's all for today. Dismissed, soldier. Yaw saluted and was about to leave when she suddenly yelled and started to excitedly wave her hands. Look, look! I turned to the benches and saw Shurik lying on one of them. Oh my. It was really hard to wake him up, as if the caveman had decided to sleep for a year beforehand. Ah, what? Where am I? He mumbled in his sleep. Do you want to explain yourself now? Explain what? We've been looking for you all night, and you jumped at Simeon with a metal rod, and then ran away. Yaw jumped around the bench ready to explode. What happened? And why am I here? Shurik seemed to come to his senses. Oh, do be so kind as to explain that. How did you get out of the mine? Why did you go there in the first place? Everything, step by step. What mine? There was such sincere surprise in his eyes that I started to doubt. He really might not remember anything. Where have you been for the last 12 hours? I don't know. Shirk sat and his face frowned with the effort of thinking. I went to the old camp in the morning. People say there was some old equipment there for parts for the robot and... He stared at us in confusion. And? And that's all. So you don't remember? I don't. Okay. I sat next to him and leaned back on the bench. The stars shone brightly in the sky. They remember everything, even what Shirk was doing in the bomb shelter. Post-traumatic shock. Poster what? Such symptoms are experienced by people after heavy stress, after a disaster, for example. Shirk remarked with a smart look on his face. You should sleep now. Yes, but... We'll speak tomorrow. Shirk looked at me for some time, but then he got up and slowly walked to his cabin without saying a word. So what's up with him? He probably forgot everything that happened in the mine. He's lying. Look, why would he have to lie? So he wouldn't have to answer for when he tried to? 
attack you with the metal rod, she said uncertainly. Doesn't look like it, and does it matter now? It does. We must find out. The criminal must be punished. If that rule was applied to you, you would have been placed under house arrest a long time ago, or worse. What does that have to do with this? I don't leap at people with a rod. It wasn't intentional. He's lying! He may be lying. I was really exhausted after today, especially this night, and I really don't care whether sh was Shirk was speaking the truth or just pretending to. Looks like he doesn't remember anything. I'm going to sleep. Then... Yolanda jumped up and stood on her tiptoes. Good night. You too. I don't know. Seemed like there was something special in the expression on her face that moment. I didn't care. The camp leader had been waiting for me at home. I thought you wouldn't come back. I would have expected my reaction from Olga, except that one. Any. Since you went with Yolanda, aren't you supposed to worry about us? Why should I? You're okay. Oh, okay, then everyone worries about Shurik. No one gives a fuck about Simeon and Yuzana. Jackasses. I had neither the strength nor will to argue with the leader, or to find out the reasons for her behavior. I took my clothes off and crawled under the blanket. It's all too much for a single person. Huh. Hmm. Looking for Shurik in the dungeons was a job for the search and rescue professionals. Doing it with Yulana for a certified madman. But it was, in a way, fun. I fell asleep with a smile on my face. Huh. I guess that's it for that day. Sweet. Well, I'll end the part there. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace.